All right, this is just a shot of the goal of what you want this nail to look like. We want four separate heads, and those little points, and that'll punch a hole out as opposed to just trying to stretch a hole. Okay, so we're gonna go over um, making the, the needle uh, that we need to punch a hole in a sheet of plastic. So if I just have a little square sheet of plastic and I grab a hold of one side and pull it, I'll stretch it, and then when I let go, it'll come back a little bit, but I'll have actually made more material because I've stretched it out and thinned it out. So if we take a needle and a sewing machine and take this sheet of plastic and punch a needle down through it, that needle is going to stretch it. The needle will eventually go through the plastic, but it'll have stretched this way out. When that needle pulls up and goes away, the plastic will shrink back, and all the plastic on this side and all the plastic on this side is trying to crunch back down. It'll actually crunch that hole and pinch it almost shut. So what I need is a needle that'll punch a hole completely out and there'll be no stretching, no bending of the plastic. So a normal needle won't work because it does just what we just talked about. I tried a, just a slide, you cut, sanded a, a needle down on one side that stretched it also. Then it, after several different attempts, made a V cut down the middle with a triangle file. That didn't work, but it turns out if I make a V cut this way, and a V cut this way, so I have four tips sticking up out of this needle, it'll punch that hole out perfectly. So that's what we ended up doing. So this is what our nail, it's a two millimeter wide nail. That's eventually what we're gonna end up making. Um, just so you know why we have to do it. If you do anything else, and I haven't, I've tried a bunch of different ones, found anything that wouldn't result in just a stretched out um, piece of plastic. I need something where the holes actually cut completely out. So that's what we're gonna be designing, and here's what it looks like. I quickly cover how to turn just a regular nail into um, one of these sewing needles. So the first thing you're gonna have, and it can have a big fat end on it, top, whatever, just take a pair of cutters, you can cut both ends off till you have something like this. Then you're gonna make a cut right along this top edge. And this is what that cut should look like. Um, here's a triangle file, and you can use any shape. This is a small one, this is a big one. The shape is always the same. The only difference is right on this edge, um, if it's a big file, it may not cut along that edge. The smaller that file is, the easier it is to cut. And so the um, file size, like this is, I think, this is a six inch file, um, and it has cuts serrated edges all the way up along this, this edge right there. Um, so this is small enough to get down in there and to make that cut. As you cut, you're just gonna cut back and forth until you cut a V in. You want the top of this to be flat. If you cut this, so this is what that cut should look like. If you cut down too far, you'll end up with a point at each end. And from the side, if you take that and rotate it sideways, this is what it'll look like. When you make the next cut, that next cut is gonna be just the triangle file. It's gonna go right across this right here. It's really easy to hit this flat edge and hold it in place. If you're trying to make that cut across that tip, it'll slide off one side or the other and be really, really hard to cut. You can still do it that way, but it's easier. So you make your first cut, sand it down a little bit, but you want enough of a flat surface on top that you can turn and start cutting down the second on the second side. And then you'll end up with a plus and it'll have a four little tips on top of it. And I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. So when you start filing this, this is pretty small and it's pretty small to hold in your hand. Um, and it's, it's kind of hard to line these up. And 12 years ago when I started this, I didn't have arthritis down here in the base of my hand. So if I'm gripping something big, I'm all right. But if I have to pinch down on something this small, it starts hurting really bad down in here. Um, so there's other things you can do to make this, this system easier. It actually is easier to hold. We developed a couple of bolts that we drilled. Um, we took a bolt and we drilled a hole down through the center. And we could slide this down into it. But it's actually easier just to make a, a block of wood. And I'll show you how to do this. So this was just a block of wood that I cut in half. Um, then I put a little groove in it. The groove, if you don't put the groove in, let me put these two together and show you what it looks like. So just set that in the groove and then pinch that off to that. And this is what it looks like on the end. And as you tighten, we're gonna tighten this down and pinch this down together. Um, but without that groove, that nail will wanna slide off one way or the other. So the groove doesn't have to be big. In fact, on the other end, I made that groove, that hole really big, and it's a little too big for what I want. Um, I just need to keep it from sliding left and right. So you can actually make that groove with a file. 
um, and just score it in there a little bit or just one pass with a saw um, is really all it takes to, to make that group big enough to do it. So then once you get that, you're going to have to play around with how far out you want the nail to stick. The further out it sticks, the more it vibrates and the harder it is to control. Um, but when you're starting, it's nice to have this kind of arrangement where the nail is between your two finger pads. And if I can turn this right, your finger pads make that V right here. And so if you push that nail in, down in there, then I can set this right there and I can form the V and hold the nail in the right place and start sliding this back and forth and sanding. So you may have find that when you start, you need this nail sticking out quite a bit. So you may need it sticking out that much, but once you have the cut, you can push that in and have a much better grip down that close. But you'll have to play with it and figure out what you want to do. So the way you, the easiest way to make this hold is make a loop, put the loop over your uh, clamp, and you want it on this end. You want it up here close to this end. So we'll put that nail on, put the clamp on, and now you need some sort of stick. And so you can use, um, I just happen to have another file here, and all you're gonna do is twist this around and tighten it. Keep in mind, you also have more nails. Um, so you can put that in there and twist this around. It's a little hard to do this with my, um, with a camera between me and what I wanna hit. But then we just twist it around twist it around and one of the things that you're going to find out really quick one of the things you need to avoid doing is um, once you have that clamp down tight you want this sticking out the back you don't want the your uh, little stick or nail or whatever sticking out the front and you'll find out instantly when you do it now I had an extra piece of rope I left on here and I just tied it around here and tied that in place um, and that's the easiest way to do it if you don't have one of these clamps I just put the clamp on, and the clamp doesn't have to hold this down. All the clamp is doing is keeping this nail from spinning around and unwinding. But now, and I need to do that a little tighter. You can see it wobble a little bit in there. So we'll do a couple more turns on this and really get it tight so that it doesn't wobble around. Um, but then you have, let's see if we can slide this up a little bit higher up on here. I think I got this too far down on the end of it. So let's go around a couple more times. Maybe one more time. There we go. And now, let's put this back on, hold that in place. There you go. So that's how you make this, this uh, device. Now you can do this with just a round piece of wood, um, cut it and just split it. You'll still need the groove, but then all you're doing is clamping this down and now you have something you can hold with. Okay, there it is filed flat. One of the really nice things about this is every time you make a mistake, all you have to do is file that flat again and you can start right back over. Um, so if you find that you're really struggling and the, you're making the cuts in the wrong areas, just stop, file it flat, and start over. Okay, so I'm going to try to film this real time. Um, you may end up seeing this sped up a lot. So one of the things that happens after you file this flat is you get little burrs around the edge. So I just take my file and clean those burrs up just so they don't hook your finger. Um, you won't feel them initially, but if you do this two or three times, you'll start feeling that. So now I want to make a V with the, the pads of my fingers. So this little V right here, so this is gonna set, line this up so you can see it, this is gonna set right down in that V. So I wanna hold the nail there to guide this. So it's the pad between this finger and the pad between that finger, right on top of that nail, and I'm gonna set that sharp edge right down in there and use my pads of my fingers to guide it. And this is the hard part. Um, you have to really picture in your head what you're doing. Like <laughs> right now you could shut the lights off and it wouldn't change my ability um, to cut this or not. It just You just can't see it. So we'll make some cuts. We'll saw on it a little bit and then we'll focus in and see what we got. Let me see if I can get it to focus right. I'm gonna have to pull it back a little bit. Let me zoom in a little bit more. You can just see the cuts starting to show up. 
Boy, that's really just focus. There you go. There's a good view of it. So I'm just starting to get it to, to show up. I've drifted, and this will happen as you cut. I've drifted down to this side. So as I cut, I'm going to let me zoom back out. As I cut into this, I'm going to saw, but I'm going to push that direction and up to sort of recenter that cut because it's a little low on this and I want it more centered. And this is a really hard part about getting this first cut in. And you can feel it when you slide across it. You can, as you slide left and right, you can feel that groove and you want to get back in that groove. And this time I want to cut down, but I want to cut down and away from me to uh, help center that. And if I mess up, I just sand the whole thing flat again and do it again. So let's get back in the groove. There we go. Oh, I gotta get a better grip. And sometimes when you do this, you'll find that you started a whole new groove. Um, and sometimes that new groove is better than the one you just left. There we go, that's not a bad, that's a pretty good cut. Now, I, I went too far when I pushed to the top, so I, I got a really nice deep cut on the top side and a shallow cut on the bottom side. Let's turn that sideways, but you can see it's starting to form that V, and that's just what we want. We also want it in focus. All right, so let's keep going, and I'm sorry this is gonna be long. I'll try to speed this up through the editing process so you don't have to sit and listen to all this. All right, so I feel back and forth, get myself back in that groove, and it's a shallow groove for sure. Um, there we go. And now I'm gonna try to just push straight down because I'm pretty centered. I just need to make my cut deeper. There we go. Now let's come back up, take a look and see what we got. Come on. There we go. Let's see if we can get this lined up there. So now we have a really nice groove. And this would actually be a really good place to stop and do my cross cut that goes up and down, up and down in this direction. Um, but we'll go ahead and, and overcut this. See if I can keep this focused. That that's a really good cut. Um, it's a little wide, but as you, as you cut, and you can actually see it on here, as you cut, sometimes you push up a little bit, pull, pull down a little bit, and so you're, you get a little sloppy, and it gets a little wide on you, and that definitely is um, a little wider than I want, but as I start making the cross cut, it's going to be just as big a pain in the butt. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this even more in this direction to, to go too far to show you what that looks like. Actually, let's stop here and I'll go ahead and do the cross cut um, just so you can see it in real time so we keep our, our time schedule. So now the trick is I need to take this and turn this sideways and make my cut again. The nice thing about this square block, and it's the first time I've used a wooden block. I've never done this before. Um, I was going to get a, a round rod. I thought a wooden rod I had in the uh, house, but I couldn't find it. So I just took this old broken chair leg and um, used it. Um, the nice thing about the square block, though, that I'm now finding is I can make a 90-degree turn perfectly um, with my hand. So now I'm 90 degrees from my original cut. And this one is super hard to do. And this is the one that's going to mess you up more than anything. So it helps to cut in just one direction to just pull back. Let me zoom out. Um, it helps, instead of sawing just to put it up, pull it back, put it up, pull it back until you get your groove stuck where you want it. So I looked at it right there. I could see it with my naked eye and put that right where I want it. And now I'm putting my fingers on to pinch and hold it as best I can in place. And these are light cuts, a really light touch to initially get this going. And then because this is such an important cut, it's a good time to stop and check and see where you're at. And my eyes are so bad that I really need this. So you can see now it looks a bit more like a mess if you're looking at it and thinking, hey, that's not right. Um, let me see if I can get this up here. So you can see the cross cut just starting. 
there we go. So the cross cut is just starting here and it's a little too low. I want that more centered. Let's rotate this up. And you can see that this cross cut right across here is too low and I really need to come down or come up with it. So I'm gonna get back in that same groove and I'm gonna push up on it. Let me zoom out. So I'm going to get back in that groove and then push that direction. I'm gonna push away as I cut down and that'll bring it back towards the center. So I still wanna go down. You want most pressure down. If you put too much pressure sideways, you'll just sand sideways and sand that side off. Um, and then you'll be starting over. Okay, so I'm gonna visually, because I can see it, put that back in the cut right where I want it. There we go. And now I'm cutting down and for the field of view, I'm pushing away from the camera as I go down. And you can see it catch. And so sometimes it's easier just to pull in one direction and, and get that going. And I can't see that at all with my naked eye. I may have muffed it up. So I went, I sanded clear across. So as I cut, I moved up and across and sanded that pretty poorly. But I still have a groove there. So I'm going to go back to my groove. Zoom back out so you can see this. Go back to my groove. And now I'm going to sort of commit to that spot and see what I get. It felt like a good groove, but it looks like it may be way too high on it. Come on, focus. So the cross cut, it's a little harder to see. It's going straight up and down, or the vertical cut's going straight up and down. The cross cut's clearly too high now. Um, but it's not bad, so we're gonna keep working on it. We'll rotate this around on its side. So there's one cross, and you can see now it's much easier to see how high on off to the side it is. Um, that's a really good picture of it. So it's clearly, I've cut too far to the top, so I need to push back down, and then we'll go back and look, and there's our original cut, and it's still dead center, it's just not that deep. So, We'll just go back to this one and I'll push down and see if I can't walk it back across. And if not, then I'll sand the whole thing flat. Let me see, make sure I got lined up the right way. Yep. That's the one I want to cut. And as you start doing this, you'll start seeing two points and you can see two little tiny tips. One on this side and one on the other side of that file. Um, and as you get bigger, as you get deeper into this, those will get bigger. So you're gonna have the up close shot here for a second while. I felt like I was in a really good spot there and I didn't wanna pull that back out. It's, it takes a trick, I mean, it takes a little bit of time to feel where you are in the groove and you can rock it around and then you'll finally feel that right spot and be able to slide into there. Um, let's take a look and see where we're at now. There's one groove and it looks like I sanded this whole side completely off. So I'm going to go back to this groove. I'm going to, because I have that groove established, I'm going to drill that down deeper and then we'll sand the whole top flat. I don't know how much more videotape <clears throat> I can put on my phone. All right, so there's my, oh, that's my bad, bad groove. There's my main groove, that's the original. So I'm now back in my original cut and I did so much sanding on the other cut that I really kind of feel like I need to reestablish this cut. Get that in there. Just clean it up a little bit. All right, now let's take a look and see where we're at. We'll zoom in and we will tap that. There we go. So you can see where I really, I went off too far on that side. And this is back to the original cut. The original cut still looks good, 
but it's too far down there. So what I'm gonna do is sand this flat again. I'm gonna keep this cut because I already have one, so I'm gonna keep that one right there. I'm just gonna sand down um, and reestablish that cut. So from the end, you can actually see it real nicely now. The two tips um, for the one side, but the other side's been sanded off. So we will get back in that groove. I'm gonna zoom out so you guys can see this better. I'm gonna cut this deeper yet um, so that I have something to go back to. Ah, uh, there we go. And so you can feel it, you can see it. It's a little easier this time. And I'm just gonna cut straight down into it. And I'm using my finger to guide it to make sure I'm not sliding too far off. And that looks really good. Um, we'll zoom back in. And you can see, so that's two sharp points. That's what all four points should look like. They should look that sharp. Um, so now that I've got that, I'm gonna go right across the top and sand this down a little bit so we can keep going. And that is the nicest part about, well, I don't know if there's a nice part about this, but that is one of the nicest parts about this and that you can just sand this down really fast. All right, now we're zoomed back out. So I'm gonna sand this down. Um, I just knocked the camera over. There's my same two really sharp tips that look really good. Um, but I'm just gonna use the flat side and I'm just gonna sand this down. And the tips wanna grab the file. So it's a little bit of a pain to get started, but once you get going, it's good. All right, so now I've sanded it down a little bit. You can still see just the tips in there, but they're sanded down pretty good. I'll go back to my original groove, the one that's been working for us, and I will start sanding again. And I'm using my finger again to guide it so I can feel where it is. The problem with this is you're sanding your finger all the time, so that's a little annoying. There we go. And now we have a nice clean cut in there. I'm gonna flip this around and cut it from the other side also. Um, as, you, as you work it, you generally don't go perfect straight across. You kind of sand at an angle. And so one side, and you can see it on here, one side of your cut will open up wider than the other. And so you may have to flip it around to balance that out. But that's a nice, nice cut right there. Um, I'll do a little bit more flattening out um, on the top in order to make that cross cut. So here's this up here. There's the cut that we have that's good, and I need to turn it 90 degrees and make another cross cut. And that's not a flat surface. If your surface isn't flat and you're trying to make that cross cut, it'll just slide off. And you can see the groove kind of towards the bottom side, right there on this side. Um, that's where it's going to end up, and I need to sand down to that to get this whole thing flat. So I'll take my file. I will zoom you back out so you can see what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this file, and I'm going to sand this flat again. Flatten that tip out, and let's see where we're at. Ah. I have a little silly thing I propped my camera. So that's nice and flat right there. There's our groove. That's the first one we put in. And then I turn it sideways, and it's almost flat. You can still see the little nick on the bottom. So I'm going to sand it a little bit flatter. The cleaner this is when you start, the easier it is to hit that second groove. So I'm going to do the make my V deeper again. We'll go back and keep working on that V. And I want it, all I'm trying to do here is maintain it. All right. And there's that V. Nice, clean looking V. And now we're going to go back across the top of it and sand this down. I just need to get a little bit flatter on top so I don't fall back into that old groove that I made that was too far off to one side. And the crazy part about it is you're doing this all on a two millimeter nail head. And once you get good at this, and what's funny is there, there'll be 
people that you work with that are awesome. They can just pick it up and do it immediately. Um, one of the guys I was working with could just hit this every single time. Um, and the rest of us would, it would take maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes to make a good nail. And then once you got it, you're doing great. Okay, so we'll go back. I'm going to reestablish my groove. I don't guess I should have zoomed out for you guys to see that. We'll zoom in again and take a look at this groove. There's our groove. Now I'm off a little bit. It's fatter to the top than to the bottom. So this time I'm going to sand and I'm going to cut into it, but I'm going to push up that direction. So I'm going to rotate this. And now when I do the cross, I'm going to push down and away to get that recentered. So I'll put both fingers up here so I can feel it a little bit better. I think that's I was using one finger just so you could so you could see it. Okay. And that felt really good. There we go. Still a little high on the, the top, still a little high, but I think it's good enough. Alright, so I recentered that. Um, it's really hard to sand this on the other side of the camera. Come on, focus. Um, so I recentered it, but I went too far down, and now you'll see what it looks like. So now I have those are rounded top and the really sharp, pointy. Um, let's zoom in that. Come on, zoom. Um, so it's really a sharp pointy tip to do the cross cut, which I'd have to do from this angle. That tip is rounded, right? So it's really hard to hit. So I'm going to turn it sideways and I'm going to sand this left and right and flatten that top out so that I can see it so I can hit it. So now I'm just going to take the flat edge and I'm going to turn it and I'm going to set it right on top of there. And I'm just going to go back and forth a little bit to establish a flat top to this. I'm not getting aggressive. And then I'll clean up this metal so small, I mean, so fine right now at the tip, that it'll often um, fold over as you're doing this. So there's our cut. Let's zoom in and see what we have in the way of flatness to the top. So now that tip's a little flatter. It'd be nice if it was flatter than that. And then I'm going to rotate it. And there's our cut. Oh, I got debris in there. There we go. There's our cut. I just lost my ceiling light. There we go. So there's our cut. And now it's flat on top. It could probably be a little flatter, but I, I don't want to go a whole lot flatter. Let's look at it right on end on. And now I've got to hit a cross cut vertically across this in this direction. So that's my next cut. So we'll zoom out. We'll try that again. And this one is, this is the pain. This one is the hard one. Let me zoom this out a little bit more so you can see what I'm doing. So again, I'm using the V right here between my two fingers, this finger and that finger. And I'm gonna set the file right down in there and I'm gonna use my fingers to guide it and put it where I want it. And you have to feel this and sort of picture it in your head. There's, you won't be able to see this. But once you get it, it's not too bad. So on this one, we're gonna cut this kind of lightly. I think I'm jumping all over the place on that. I may have to flatten that top out a lot more. There we go. Yeah. 
Um, I'm going to do a little bit more flattening on the top. Just to get, I'm going to flatten this out a little bit more on top just to give me a cleaner um, spot. And you can see my V right there. And I'm going to turn this that way. And then I'll just do a little bit of light sanding. Just want to get a top in there. And let's see, now you can see that's a nice big flat wide top to hit. Now I've got a good target. So that's what I should have done that last time instead of trying to do it as rounded as I did. Okay, so now we will use your fingers again to line that up. And I'm gonna pull just in one direction. And I'm only cutting on one of the two sides. So I'm only cutting and you can see the nick on the left there, on the right, I'm sorry. Actually, I don't know how it's going to show up on the camera. Why does the camera always focus on things you don't want it to? So you can see the nick right there. So on this hump, on this hump, I cut off, put a nick in here. Once I get that a little bit better established, I'll lay the file flat and go all the way across. So to exaggerate this, just to show you what I'm doing, I'm cutting kind of at an angle like this. Come on, focus. So I'm cutting at an angle like this instead of flat, just to get that initial groove in. Once I get that groove in, I'll level this out and cut across. And that's also hard because you can cut at an angle um, as you're cutting, instead of cutting straight across, you cut that one groove like this, but then you rotate it and you cut that way instead of cutting straight. So it's a nice way to start, but you still have to be really careful that you're cutting what you want. So I'm now back in my groove and it's a little tiny groove, but you can feel it. And there I'm sitting in it. And now, okay. That is spot on. Now I'm going to, since I cut this way, I'm going to rotate this flat and cut into the other side using this first groove as a guide. So now I'm in that first groove and I'm going to cut straight across. Nice and slow. Ha, ah, that's a good one. All right, so now let's zoom in. There it is. Now it's a little out of focus, but that is perfect. So we have the four tips just starting to show up. Now all I've got to do is drop that file right back into that spot and cut those wider. So I think this was something like maybe 10 minutes total, and that's with, uh, I think, two restarts or semi-restarts. So we'll get back in our groove, get back in our groove, and you can feel them. And now all I'm doing is, is cutting the V deeper, and that'll make the points, as I sand away the rest of the top material, it'll turn everything into sharp points. All right. And you can start seeing the tips starting to show up nicely. And we're gonna rotate, and I'm gonna drop into this next set of Vs. And if you see, let me zoom in here. Let's see if we can zoom in on that. Come on, choose that. There you go. So there you can see the tips. Now I've got four tips. They're coming into nice sharp points. When you put this file on, you should have two tips on your side of the file. You can inadvertently single out one tip like that and sand this whole tip off. So as you're doing it, make sure you have two, two tips in view. And then if I rotate this again, then when I sand, I want the two tips here in view. And now you have nice sharp tips. And that's actually probably pretty close. I'm gonna go ahead and sharpen those up, but that's really all you're looking for. You can get them pointier. 
um, and we will here just for this, uh, but they, they dull pretty fast and get back to sort of this stage pretty quickly. Let me zoom out just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. It's really hard to do this way to have the camera set up. So you can see that that's the far side, that shiny part of the two tips on the far side. And so I'm gonna drop this back in. And we're just gonna nice easy. Now we're not putting very much pressure. We never really want a whole lot of pressure. Um, but very little pressure this time and we'll do that and we'll do the same for this side and you can see our two tips on this side and there you go so now I'm going to bring this up see if we can focus on that little tip right there that's what it looks like it's not that much um, but as it turns out, this is what you need. And I think that took me about maybe 12 minutes with starts and restarts. I'll take a look. We'll put this all together in one video and, and show you guys. So some of the things that happen to your nail um, when you're using it to this, this needle is the tips will start to roll over. And you can tell, and I'll show you, we'll pull the sewing machine out and I'll show you uh, what that looks like on the, the matting, on the plastic. But all you have to do is go back and lightly and lightly by like holding it like that and just letting the files weight do itself, it'll straighten out and clean up those tips. And then sometimes I come from the outside and I do an upward stroke on the outside of the nail, just cleaning up any of the burrs that are up here on the outside. So you should be able to feel that and not feel any burrs at all. Um, and there you go.